All right, so we took care of this one. We know that's polar, and so it has dipole, dipole. Uh, which one we do next? H2S. H2S. So who's going in the middle? S is going in the middle. Is that what everybody got for your Lewis dot structure? Yes? All right. Well, let's go ahead and go down here. Uh, we got our name. We got our formula. The start of the formula. We got Lewis dot structure. Uh, are there only two atoms? No. Is there lone pairs on the central atom? Yes, right. These are lone pairs. I know it's a weird thing to say, lone and pair, but, but yeah, that, these are lone. These are called lone pairs. So they're lone pairs on the central atom. That means this is a polar molecule. So I'm going to go ahead and write polar here. And remember, if this is a polar molecule. This looks a lot like this. Now you've seen this structure before. This structure looks very similar to what? Yeah, if oxygen was in here, it would be what? Water. Yeah, so this is the structure. It looks like that. But remember, these two hydrogens are going back into the board. Looks like that now. Okay, definitely polar. It's a polar, polar molecule. So do I have any hydrogens bound to F, O, or N? No. So the only thing we've got going on is this is dipole, dipole. Dipole dipole bonding. Okay. Uh, boron trichloride. Can y'all go ahead and do that? So, first thing to do is write the formula. Formula for boron trichloride is Okay, now you gotta do the Lewis dot structure. All right, so we remember boron. Let's go ahead and take a second. We'll draw this. Boron has our one, two, three. That's how many we have. And each chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And I, we go back to kindergarten. We connect the dots. So that's boron trichloride. I got my Lewis dot structure. There's more than two atoms. Are there any lone pairs on the central atom? No. Okay. Is anybody different? No. What are the only forces? This is a nonpolar. And since it's nonpolar, the only forces available are London dispersion forces. Do y'all see how that works? Carbon disulfide. Can we do carbon disulfide? Write carbon disulfide. Draw that structure for us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Di means. That's it. Yeah, y'all got to get those prefixes. Make sure you know the di and the tri and the tetra and the mono and the nano because those are not on the test. Those you just have to know. Yes. What's that? That's what we're talking about here. We're determining if things are molecular or, or polar or nonpolar. Bond polarity is this guy right here. So this is bond polarity. Right? So C and H, there's a difference. We use that electronegativity, we subtract it. That's my bond polarity. Molecular polarity is. Is this whole guy polar? In this case, I have a, an S and an H, right? And so I have a, a, a vector that creates a polarity. So I have a side of the molecule that's more positive uh, and more, another side that's more negative. And what, what do you write for like bond polarity? So bond polarity, if I'm looking here, I'm going to do my subtraction. So. Oh. This is, so this is 0 0.4. The CH bond is 0 0.4. Okay. So carbon disulfide is CS2. 
and it's going to look like this. You all follow that? Like, like the double bond? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go through the steps on this one. So I've got carbon, one, two, three, four, sulfur. Trying to go a little quickly here. And so now visually, hopefully you can see, I need to, I need to connect these two and these two. You can look visual, or you can count, them, count up all the electrons. Okay. That's the other method. Yeah, carbon has to have eight. Sulfur has to have eight. So yeah, it would be wrong. It has to be drawn. This is really the only way to draw it okay. once, once you get done. Now, is this going to be polar or nonpolar? Do I have any lone pair electrons? Give me just a second. No. no. And is anybody different on the outside? No. That means it's nonpolar. And if it's nonpolar, what's available? It's the That's it. All right. If you got to pass, get on out of here.